Welcome to the Food Fight podcast from EAT Food, a show exploring the greatest challenges facing the food system and the innovations and entrepreneurs looking to solve them. Hola, I'm Julia Montaliu. I'm 25 and I come from Spain. I'm currently based in Copenhagen doing my master's in pharmaceutical engineering. I'm also a trained pharmacist and nutritionist. Bonjour, my name is Chloe Dorin and I'm a sustainable and food agri specialist. I currently work in the leading milk it company, HelloFresh, in finance. And this is a takeover episode. We're actually from EAT Food, Future Food Makers. Who are the Future Food Makers? We are a group of food activists here to disrupt the food system and make sure that the next generation has a voice. In today's episode, we will talk through our mission and how we're shaping the future of the food industry. So let's get into it. This whole project started back in 2020. It was created by EIT Food. They wanted to create a group of youth activists between ages of 18 to 24 years old. And they made a call for all the youth in Europe who were interested in food sustainability. And then 10 of us were selected. And then we worked in the creation of a manifesto for different industry and policy stakeholders with lots of demands on what the youth wanted to see from these stakeholders in terms of the food industry and next steps in this. So in general, I would say that the Future Food Makers is a group of youth-led activists in food system sustainability. And our mission is to create a sustainable change in the food system by raising awareness and stimulating youth-led activism. So for me, joining as a future food maker was a reason to also show my passion for the food industry. I'm from France and I think we really consider food as really sacred. And as I came across the climate change, I really thought food was a way to really contribute at my own level. And I felt that if I could use my voice to really use that individual contribution level, then I could have much more youth around me and people really feeling like, if she can do it, I can also do it too. For me, I joined because, well, as I said, I have a health background which is not really related to sustainability. Sustainability has always been a passion of mine and I was missing it in my life somehow. I was missing the chance to do something about it. And I saw in in the Future Food Makers the opportunity to put my dietitian and my nutritionist knowledge to practice and add some value through it while also having an impact in terms of food sustainability and being able to do something for the youth. So that was highly motivating. I think that in general, there's kind of like a feeling of distrust from the youth towards the food industry, which does not really reflect the reality of it. The food industry is an industry that works hard to provide with lots of nice um, alternatives and healthy products. It has had changes and it still needs changes, but so does everything. So I think that part of our mission is also to show what the truth is and show the changes and add some value to build that trust within the potential and the new consumers and also the policymakers and governments and such. So, No, and I think the trust has to come also with real, uh, with real data. Yes. Because... I think uh, there is increasing regulation, there is increasing consumer demand for transparency. There is also increasing offer of sustainable product and especially in food, since our generation is also much more conscious of health. We're much more careful in like reading labeling and it has become a time where labels should be really transparent in terms of data and the EU has a strong role in like really displaying the framework because how can as a company can you make sure that what you're selling is really compliant with scope 3 emissions for instance so we initially gathered all the issue 
we sow in the food system with definitely way too much issues. <laughs> and we decided to kind of scatter them into some general idea of what is the related issue behind. And that's where we created a total of six demands. Our final six calls to action were the first one to target the 25% of EU agricultural land to be managed under regenerative practices by 2030, to define uniform EU nutrition and labeling guidelines, to develop an inclusion policy to support vulnerable communities and improve food accessibility, to develop a true cost implementation system across the mass production food value chain by 2030, to tackle food waste at sector level, and finally, to embed food within education for all. I think one of the main challenges, though, that we face being a youth-led kind of thing is that now it's very trendy to listen to youth. But is it really trendy to listen to us seriously? You know, it's very nice to say that you take our opinion into account, but... I think the main challenge here is to overcome like this mm, kind of like paternalism that sometimes can arise from that. Just uh, companies liking to say that they work with us, but um, are you really going to do any change or are you just going to say that, yeah, we, we talk with young people, you know, so I think that's a challenge in that general youth uh, organizations face, honestly. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like, uh, at the end, what we want is action. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Like, is that going to translate into we something? Mm -hmm. So we initially said that we felt as young people that our voices was not heard, and especially in the food system. And we were approached by Food Drink Europe, who is a leading organization representing many uh, leading brands in the food system. And we were approached for participating into a panel discussion around actually trust. How do we trust manufacturers in the food industry and it felt really amazing that whole discussion and even participating with them on other activities that Julia also participated with which was really incredible I really enjoyed it <laughs> yes so Food Drink Europe organized I believe it was last June they organized the Food Future Ideas Fest where they had different speakers on different topics regarding food sustainability. So I remember they had plastic like materials and they also had something about climate change and then they had healthy lifestyle. And I was invited to talk about healthy nutrition in terms of Generation Z and how the youth perceives it. And that was a very enriching experience, honestly. It's very, it gives you another kind of, pride to know that your work is going somewhere and the people are listening to you the whole food system moves very slowly so sometimes it's very difficult to see where your work leads towards but that was a very nice experience yes i think for me it has been our collaboration with foundation earth indeed uh, in terms of nutrition the idea was that foundation earth offers an eco-labeling combining both the nutrition and the impact of food. And I really thought, man, how do they actually do it, you know? And that's personally how I became super interested into life cycle assessment. I'm passionate about also numbers. I'm passionate about data. I love to work with them. And I really thought how incredible it is like to really look at the whole value chain where you look at the very beginning from the moment it's at the farm, what are the pesticides being used? How does it regenerate the soil? How much water has been put till the very end of the value chain for the consumers? How is the consumer being able to dispose the bottle of milk? And collaborating with foundation nurse has been kind of like a very revealing, I would say, domain of expertise that I want to develop in. I learned a lot about, of course, like labeling and how guidelines operate. So at the beginning, we said that we wanted unified EU guidelines because we are talking in terms of 
what is easier to unify and how it's easier to provide all the population with information that helps them reach a healthy um, state in terms of nutrition and such. But you don't realize how difficult it is. And I don't think that at the beginning we really took into account the cultural backgrounds and how that affected the different guidelines because every country has different guidelines and some countries unify to create different guidelines and it's just much more complex than I think we thought at the beginning. So that was just something that really sparked my interest in terms of uh, general but it's also when you are passionate about sustainability and especially about food sustainability I think as a consumer you tend to focus a lot about how you manage your waste, your own food waste, your own plastic waste, etc. But you know, the main impact doesn't really come from you. It comes from stages above of you. So talking and learning about regenerative agriculture or tackling um, food waste at other sector levels, I don't know, it's just very empowering. And it's it gives another dimension to how you consume and the decisions that you make as a consumer. Last year, we published the manifesto and we worked on promoting it. And this year, we asked ourselves what the next steps would be. So we decided we would do a report focusing on all the changes and all the improvements and maybe not so improvements that have been made in each of our areas of demands. So we've been writing a report on that, which is finished and we're just ultimating the design and graphic elements, details and such. So hopefully it's going to be published quite soon. And it's a report that sums up everything that was going on within the food system in the last year. So in 2022. And that was a lot of work for us. So we also realized that we need, maybe we need to expand. So Chloe, what do you think of that? Yeah, I think I'm realizing on top of my work, then publishing this report is another work. And it comes to a point where our voices need to also reach out to more other young people. So for this new year, also, we want to be able to recruit more young people so that we can continue doing our work because we have to also be honest we also age at the same time right yes we exactly. enter the workforce so let's get back into the energy rolling so we can have an even larger audience yeah because you know the future food makers started for people who were between 18 to 24 but all of us were kind of more leaning towards that 24 span than towards the 18 so I think we're gonna benefit from having some new people and we still have to define what we want to do and how we want to do it but we have some ideas about creating local hubs for young communities that maybe want to do something more in like hands to action kind of thing so we're excited about that we'll see how that goes out <laughs> yeah definitely hands on action we get motivation also by just doing, right? Writing is, of course, amazing because you spark interest. But when you do things, yes, that's when you feel your hands are getting dirty. And... I think we still have lots of ideas of things to do. And that's just very empowering and very motivating, at least for me. And I love the project that we've created. And I love how passionate all the team is. And like, I don't know, it gives another sense of community and it's just all of us are passionate about making a change even if it's small and the food system covers a whole spectrum of things that need change even if we're able to just do something on it I think our work is worth it also is very interesting. I mean, I had lots of experience last year that I wouldn't have been able to have if it weren't for the future food makers. Like I was invited to Brussels to do a TED talk with food industry leaders. Like what's that? Where does that come from? Even as career opportunities, you act as an advocate, as an agent of change. And if an employer looks at me, I'm pretty sure that this person is going to be like, oh, wow. She's 26 and she's already done that in the sense that I'm pretty sure it's also like 
wow, is is that person really has a drive? And this is maybe like external satisfaction. But for myself, I think it's been like also a journey in the learning of how much information can I actually get? I constantly read reports and new news article about foods, what is the upcoming law, getting all the newsletter about innovation. And I'm just like, I may be young and I maybe don't have the expertise on it, but I really try to grasp as much of it. And being part of that group of future food makers has been just like the most empowering group of people to just push me for like, this is exactly what you were meant to be and exactly where you want to develop yourself. Yeah. Also remember at the beginning, I was very intimidated when we started because lots of people from our team, they come from different educational backgrounds and oh, yeah. uh, like there's lots of people who are very capable and had already done oh, so yeah. many things in terms of like mm. climate activism and such. And transforming that intimidation, if you want to call it like that, towards inspiration, like getting inspired by your teammates and knowing that you're working with people who, who are compromised with what they do. It's just, you learn so much. Like I've learned so much from all of us and I've learned so much from Chloe. For example, she's so organized and like so meticulous. She's so <laughs> driven. It's so nice to like work with people who like keep you engaged as well. Mm. And me as a compliment to you, Julia, I would <laughs> no, say no you need. are the most <laughs> vibrating person. You are seeing every little sun in everyone's uh, heart. Thank you. So for any younger person who's listening to us and who's motivated about food sustainability or just in general about wanting to make a change in some area and you're feeling maybe demotivated because you don't really know where to start. What I've realized after being a future filmmaker is that it might sound cliche, but you just have to start. Like if you find yourself a platform that increases your voice, so now it's social media, which I would say it's quite like our... Yeah, it's our area, it's our zone, it's where we feel comfortable and where we have power to do lots of stuff. Then people come at you. Like, I don't think that's a thing that you, you expect at the beginning, but people come to you more often than what you think. And then you start building from there. So I wouldn't be so much worried about the how. I would just start and also have a very solid message that you can identify yourself with and that you are confident that it's true, like back up yourself with data and with uh, some expertise so that people can also take you seriously because that's kind of what happens with young people. We're not taking that serious. Mm. And if I were to talk to uh, the Chloe of uh, 18 years old that don't know uh, how to start, I would say also uh, join uh, groups around you. I personally started with volunteering at the farm uh, next to my place. And I thought I'm uh, joining myself with uh, people from uh, lower income. And I'm a white lady planting tomato. But how fun it is to get my hands dirty and really understand that food as a way of bringing people together and laying down the foundation of really inclusivity. Yeah, join forces, sign petition, go in the streets to make sure that your voice is being heard. I think that has been the most uh, empowering also actions that I would say have helped me to feel my voice is powerful in some way, despite that it's small. Hmm. And you don't even need to start something. Like you can, as Louis said, you can just join someone that has a message that you strongly feel about and then learn from there and, I don't know, see where that goes. I would say that's, yeah, it's nice to have a community that helps you, so definitely. And you can also message us and follow us in our social media because we're going to be looking for people. So if you're interested, keep an eye on us. <laughs> 
at Future Food Makers. Make sure to put an S. Well, that just leaves us to say a big thank you to everyone for listening. This has been the Future Food Makers Takeover. Thank you, everyone. And if you'd like to find out more about what we do, head over to the EIT Food website and look for the Future Food Makers, where you can learn more about the project and the upcoming report or activities that we're about to launch. Au revoir and see you soon. Adios. Adios.